In this lecture, we will look at life cycle of a thread or a process also. So what is the life cycle? Of course, like any living being or something, so a thread, let's say it starts, okay, so you create a thread, it has to do some work, so you spawn a thread or a process. Now what happens when it's created, then its work is to start. So it now moves into the ready queue. Okay, so from where the CPU will be taking it and executing. So now it goes to a queue. So it goes into some queues and there what happens? It goes into the ready queue and from there what happens if it is taken by the CPU? For running execution, then it goes into the run state. So it goes into the run state. Now it might happen that in that particular CPU time itself, it has completed its work. Then it goes into the terminated state. But if the work is long, then it might now. So what happens here yeah, from the ready queue, so the scheduler will dispatch. Okay, so when it's time come, so it is in the front of the queue it will go into the running state where the CPU will be executing it. And if it is done, then it can be terminated. But if some interrupt comes, okay, so let's say its work was not complete, but other thread have now got a chance. So this will be interrupted. It will go again and it will be pushed into the queue at the back. So it will be again into the ready state waiting for the CPU to execute it. Okay, then what happens if some process or thread is in the running state and let's say it asks for some input output, it wants to access some input device or output device, then it goes into a wait. So it will go into a wait state to get the input output device and it will go into that particular queue, the process and it will automatically be preempted from this running queue state and it will go into the basically the waiting state okay now after the completion of the input output event it will again go to the ready queue okay so that or in fact if it is waiting also for something and if it gets an interrupt okay or event completion it will go into the ready state and then again wait for the cpu to execute so that's why one example if you have a thread and ask it to sleep for 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds then in fact this is the minimum that it will sleep why because if it will when the cpu the process was running or the thread was running it started sleeping so then input out or some wait statement is there in sleep basically you are waiting so your cpu will be relinquished and then it will go into the waiting state then after some time when the timer has expired so that e event for triggered it will be triggered that now sleep has been over so it will be woken up and it will now go into the ready state into the end of the ready queue and then after the waiting time it will go into the cpu running state so there will be some plus delta amount of time so these are the states for a life cycle of a thread or process so both of them follow the same so i hope you understand this about the life cycle of a thread thanks a lot